What's going on, y'all? Bishop Brigante, welcome to another episode of Risk and Rewards. This is the series where we talk to your favorite personalities about some of the risks they've taken in their careers to get where they are today. And right now, I wish I had air horns. I wish I had a flag. I, I have I have it on the, on the hoodie. Ah, me, 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 me. Ah. Yo, we have our we have our prime minister. We have our <laughs> yo, Cardinal Officials in the building. What up? My first official, no pun intended, my wow. first official <coughs> Canadian Risk and Rewards. Yes, sir. It's an honor to have you here, my brother. How are you? Yeah, always a pleasure to be rocking with you, my G, my birthday twin. What up? May 11th. You know what it is. You know what I'm saying? You know what, Taurus gang? It is yeah, what it is, man. Strength of the bull, you already know. And Scarborough, repping. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I, I'll be listen. I'll be. I'll be honest. We can, we don't have to, but it's like, you know, right, rightfully so. Um, I've been, I've been blessed to like live in a in a handful of places around around Same. Toronto. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, I was definitely, um, born in Scarborough. Like I think, yo, to be honest, I was born in Scarborough Centenary Hospital. Like not long after that joint was built, it was a brand new hospital when I was born there. You know what I'm saying? Nice. And then, you know, you know what it is, like bounced around the place, lived in Scarborough, um, lived in Flemo for a bunch of years. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Oakwood and Vaughn. Um, We're claiming you, bro. It doesn't matter. We, mm -hmm. gave, you, we gave you a walk. We gave you a well, start. Of course. Hey, well, of course. I mean, listen, you, listen, at the end of the day, a man was born in Scarborough. You know That's what I'm it. saying? So it's like, when you look at the passport and it says, yo, where was a man born? Done. Scarborough, you know what I mean? So it is what it is. It's, all, it's always going to hold a special place, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yo, yeah. I want to jump in. And, and first off, I want to congratulate you um, on this new position, Senior VP, Universal mm -hmm. Music. Talk to me. They're finally putting the right people in the right positions or what? Is that what's going on? Yo, I mean, yeah, there's definitely, I mean, listen, shout out to, to you know what I mean, to Jeffrey Remedios and the whole crew, but I think also, at the end of the day, not taking anything away from the organization, but like I had to earn that shit, bro. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like I was there. It's not like I was just there last year and all of a sudden I became, um, you know, the SVP of ANR. I call it the streets vice president. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, it's like I put in I put in time, you know what I mean? So it's like while I've been doing all kinds of, you know, what I mean, all kinds of different things, shows around the world, DJing with the Marauders, this, that, like all that stuff that was going on, like, I don't even want to call it in the background. What I was doing in addition to that um, was putting in my time as an executive, you know what I'm saying? Really learning, learning the chops, learning how it works, what I call behind the iron curtain. Mm -hmm. And yo, bitch, I'll tell you like, some of, some of our heroes, some of our icons that have been in the game for mad years still don't really know how the business side works. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. On the, on the other side. So <clears throat> what I love and to me, how I look at it as a super privilege is like being able to be educated as to what really goes down. Because here's the thing, like before I took the job, I'll be honest, it would be to where like me and you would have super conspiracy theories about, yo, I know this is happening with the labels because of this. So yo, they're showing favoritism to this artist because right. of it. Now here's the thing. It's not that we were wrong. The only thing is that being in the job that I that I have right now, I understand why. You know what I mean? I can break it down in a very, you know, I can show you the logistics behind what may, you know, what may go behind a label giving priority to a certain artist. Or, you know what I'm saying? A lot of different things. Because not to go into the story too crazy, but it's like, you know, I remember, you know, people like, I know that your audience is like real hip hop lovers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I came up in the earlier days and I was never boxed in. Cause if you know my, my history, like, you know, what really popped off for me in this country was a, a, a single I had that was called on with the show. You know what I'm saying? That came out when I was in high school. Word. But One of my favorites. I, I appreciate, I love that. But you see, here's what's ill is that like, them times, and it's like, you know, roles have changed, categories have changed or whatever, but them times, I guess I would have been considered like an underground MC, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Right. So it's like to come out with a song like On With The Show, that was a straight club joint. 
right? So I've never really, like, if you know my history and my legacy, I've never been one to be like, yo, I'm not going to try and do this or do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just love music. So anyways, I say all that to say later on in my career, um, you know what I'm saying? Like when I was down with, with Akon and Convict in them, you know, I remember when Dangerous came out and, you know, when Dangerous started to pick up, bro, like Dangerous was doing like hundreds of thousands a week. You know what I mean? And it's like, I was, and I'm not talking about no damn streams. I mean, people were coming out of physical, pocket. Physical. You know what I mean? Like what, yo, like those multi-platinum plaques that you get, like that you got from them times, that's people that took the money out of their pocket. Mm. There's a jewel that I'm going to drop and it may not even be a jewel, but it's something that I think needs to be reiterated. Like right now, what we're doing, we're just fighting for people's time as a, like as musicians, we're not fighting for people's money before. So it's like before, if we wanted somebody to support Bishop Brigante, they, you know what I mean? We wanted them to support Cardinal. Those people had to save up and they're like, all right, I got $20 today. I can only buy two albums. Who's that? All right, 50 came out. All right, cool. I'm going to buy 50. So when you actually bought my shit, that it's meant with money. Yeah, like money. Family. That's like an actual sale. Somebody's like, yo, I'm committing to this. Here's where we are today in the industry, which is interesting. I will listen to a whack nigga shit at any time. If somebody's like, yo, let me hear some shit. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to the shit because it don't cost me nothing except my time. So here's the shit. Here's the thing. Mm. If somebody has a marketing strategy that's going to allow, yo, bitch, you might, somebody might say to you, yo, I need you to check this nigga. Yo, this shit is hilarious. He's so trash. You're like, yeah, yeah sure. Right. I'll check it out. You might listen to it. You might be like, no, nah, he didn't say that. You might listen to it two and three times and be like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. You may hit me up and say, yo, Cardi, I need you to check this nigga. He's so trash. By the time that the whole culture does that, he may have 500 million streams. Wow. This true. nigga will be out there on his IG talking about, yo, but I stream a billion times. Nigga, you could be trash. And niggas listen to you a billion times. A stream does not equal fans. It just equals time. Um, you know, it equals time. Like you were able to gain somebody's attention for a brief moment in time. But it's the same reason why you might have somebody that streams extremely well, but they ain't selling no shows. They, they don't have no fans. It doesn't equate to people still being here a year from now, two years from now, so forth and so forth. So anyways, I digress. I, I went on a tangent, but it was important. No, it's a good I think, one. It's a good I think one. you need to understand that shit. But here's the thing. So. I remember when Dangerous was going crazy, right? And, you know, shout out to Lady Gaga. Like, you know what I'm saying? That whole, that whole era was it, was, a, it was a tornado of just wild shit. But yeah, yeah. I remember what was crazy was Interscope told me at the time, they're like, yo, Cardi, right now you're outselling everybody. Pussycat dolls, whoever's on the label, like right now your shit is selling more than anybody. I was like, yo, that's crazy. But then I remember I went to this, I went to this um this Lady Gaga showcase that they did for like all the media. So like every magazine, TV, whatever. Tastemaker. I remember going, I remember going into, I'm looking around and I said, yo, what kind of shit is this? You guys just told me that I'm the number one selling artist on, on um Interscope right now. Yeah. How come I'm not getting that look? But that was the first lesson that I had to learn in terms of like understanding how the business side works. They're like, yeah, but for Lady Gaga, they had a 360 on her, you understand? So they were gonna get a piece of everything. They were gonna get a piece of her shows, a piece of her, um, her brand partnerships, all the rest of that. So they're like, yo, it's all good. We're gonna invest in her because we're gonna see more of a return if she pops off. Here's the thing, if she sells 10 million and I sell 10 million, they're gonna make way more on her because they're gonna make a percentage of all the, all, all the ancillary shit. But for me, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my lawyer, but we ain't give up that 360. So they're like, all right, cool. We appreciate that you're selling, but we're <laughs> going to invest in her. So I remember it was wild because I'm like, yo, like that was a really the first time that I really, really understood sometimes like why they prioritize certain artists and how the industry side of it actually works. That so might, I, scare, that, that might, that, so like, okay, are, are there specific pros and cons? Because I know, that a lot of, you know, like you just said, you didn't give up the 360. 
Mm-hmm. Then there's artists that give up the 360 that get this crazy exposure because they, you know, the labels and the companies, they want to return on it. So yeah. we're, like, wh- are there specific pros and cons to a 360 and not a 360? Cause I know you make more money in like, you know, independently. So, make- so here's the thing that's not necessarily true for everybody. And that's why the game gets fucked up sometimes Okay, because there's some people that's like, yo, I'm going to retain a hundred percent ownership of everything. Now, I'm not speaking out against 100% ownership, but here's the thing. It was taught to me a long time ago. You could own 100% of $10, or you could have 40% of $10,000. If you do the quick maths, you could, you know what I mean? You could see that depending on the situation and what, what works best for you, right. it might be to your advantage to give up a piece so you can get more. You know what I'm saying? Like 100% of zero is zero. You know what right. I'm saying? So you could be independent and be like, yo, I own all my shit. Niggas is like, yeah, but you also only have 500 streams, my G. Like nobody heard you. Yeah. So you can, you can, you know what I'm saying? So I always say having done so, like, you know, I came up in the independent era. So I know all about ownership and, and all of that because that's when we were young, that's what we came up doing. But then it's like, I've probably seen like a bunch, you know, when I got signed to MCA Records back in um, back in 2000, like that was just actually there. You know, it was an interesting structure to the deal because people know people that know about the Firestarter album. The funny thing was that was what they called they classified it as a recompilation album because I did all those songs before I even got signed. So right. it's not so it's not like that album was like, I got signed, I got a deal, and this I got a recording budget, right, I went right. in, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I came to the label with. So mm. when people's talking about Old Time Killing, Bacardi Slang, Maxine, like all these different joints, like these are all shits that I had done before I even got signed. You know what I'm saying? So just to, you know, just to break it down a little bit, you know, we ended up getting a compensation for that because, or compensated because basically they bought out part of my existing catalog you know what i mean so that was bread that went into the deal and then you know i'm saying there was going to be um you know an advance for that and you know whatever whatever but it's like the thing was like i've done so many different types of deals over my career i kind of have you know i mean like a um a real understanding of like Mm. what goes it like what goes into different types of deals that you do you know what I'm saying? And, and and literally because we're on this show right now, like the risks and rewards, it's super important for you to be educated and understand because some people ain't willing to put up the risks, but then they're wondering why they don't see the rewards. Right. So it really depends on what type of artist you are. Yo, Bishop, there's some artists, some niggas play video games during the day. They drink, they smoke. You know what I'm saying? They go to studio till 4 a.m., 5 a.m. They sleep in whatever like rinse and repeat you know what i mean rinse and repeat here's the thing some people ain't built for a major label system you know what i mean because it's like the thing is well let me let me not say that some people are not built for an independent system because when you're indie you got to work 10 times way hard yeah yeah yeah. but some people ain't built for that so some people they just want to be babysat like they want to go to the labels have the labels be responsible for most of the shit which is fine and I think that's the point that I'm getting at is you got to figure out within your career to me, I think you got to figure out in your career, what works best for you. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, you know, you sometimes, you know, we watch drink champs and we hear Nori always ask the question, which one do you like better independent or major? You know what right, I'm saying? Right. And it's like, yo, some people love the hustle of, of indie. Some people love major. I remember me and Mr. Morgan, we had a phrase that said, um, uh, independent, independent hustle with the major label muscle. That was our shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Whereas like we, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like we worked with the labels, but it's like our mind state where we was at, we was always trying to hustle, you know what I'm saying? And, and make sure that regardless of, of, of what circumstance we were in, we were always going to have that mind state, you know what I'm saying? That was on a constant grind, a constant hustle and never get, never get comfortable, no matter what status you're at. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Bro, we, we, we just got into the interview and it's gem, <laughs> it's gem after gem after gem. My G, that's my that's my job. <laughs> I'm the bridge. That's what we gotta do. You know what I'm saying? We can't we can't hold on to these gems. We gotta put it out there for the people. Yo, so okay, so let b- before we get into these risks, I want to ask you, like I, I've seen 
I, I seen you uh, promoting and, and pushing a couple of artists. Are, is there any that you've been more hands-on? Uh, I know previously it was the A&R job position but, and creative director, but now, you know, senior vice president. Is there anybody specifically or any artist that you've been more hands-on with that's, that's coming out or, or has dropped already? Yeah, man. I mean, listen, the dope thing about being an SVP, right, is it's like there are artists that I sign directly, but then it's like I also um, oversee the roster. You know what right. I'm saying? So it's like it may not be me that signed it directly. It might be, you know what I'm saying, Matt Sousa, maybe Marv, maybe, you know what I'm saying, Big Ives, Whitney, Guillaume, mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Like we got a whole, um, a whole squad over there. But the thing is, as SVP, I'm there also to like, um, I think lend lend my helping hand, um, open up my global network, um, all those different things. Like I make myself available to try and help any act. You know, what I'm saying that sign. So if there's if there's something to where I can add value to it as the SVP, what's dope is it's like I don't really have to too tough like really be in the rat race of like. Um, Yo, I gotta make sure, and you know, I'm, you know, what I'm saying it's like to yeah, me, yeah. I'm, like, I'm gonna help the, I'm gonna more help the team try and fill jacks in the situation. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. So I mean, you know, on the, you know, the the roster is growing crazy right now, bro, and it, it's super dope. So it's like we have, you know, all types of different, all types of different stuff, and some and some stuff that I want to sign before the year is over. But it's like, you know, I sign, um, you know, we have, you know, this 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 rapper. From Montreal, this kid um, Zach Zoya, but Zach Zoya is not just like a one-dimensional rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm being completely honest, he sings better than he raps, depending on who you ask. But I love it because it's kind of like, imagine if you had, um, you know, what I'm saying like a, I don't know, like a Bryson Tiller meets a Chris Brown meets a whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like the kid, like he has the potential to go all the way. Nice. You know what I mean? So you know, we signed him from Montreal. I signed one of the greatest singers I've ever heard in my life, this kid from London, Ontario, named Emmanuel, who literally was like, Ooh. you know what I'm saying, was like a nobody, nobody. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. I mean, oh, like, oh. no Twitter followers, no IG. He was just a man with an incredible gift, you know what I'm saying? And that's out now. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's out, out now. Like, we, that's we fire. Him, we took him from zero to 30 million streams in a year, like, just building, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, we ain't nearly there yet at all, but... I love, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love it. Like, it's so ill. I remember, um, but right, right, right. The last show that I had before pandemic, I was um, at a show with like the cast of um, Game of Thrones. Idris Elba was there, a bunch of different people. And I remember like, yo, you know, Idris is my guy since, since like the wire times. Like I met him, yeah. you know, back in like, I don't know, 2002 or so, you know what I mean? Like early 2000s. And I said, yo, I said, yo, Idris, I need you to check this, check this kid out. And he's like, yeah, yeah, of course, whatever. So I'm thinking to me, I'm just like, yo, I just want a little cosign, like maybe a little quote that I can use or whatever. And, you know, Idris listened to Emmanuel and he called me. I remember the Sunday, which is weird because he called me on the Sunday and then the Monday he announced to the world that he had COVID, which was crazy because I started to freak out because. I was like, yo, do I have COVID? Because like, Oh, yeah, was, you were just with him, right? I was yeah. just with him. Yeah. And it's not just I was with him. Like, we, you know what I mean? Daps, hugs, the oh, my yeah. G, whatever. <laughs> anyway, but Idris linked me to Sunday, and he's like, yo, Cardi, this guy's incredible. Like, he's incredible. He is. He's like, yo, I, I want to be a part of this. And what's dope is that Idris helped us launch Emmanuel right at the beginning of the pandemic. So right when the pandemic hit, we are like, like we're like we thought we were screwed you know what i'm saying yeah because you're thinking but, like oh, we got a tour we got to present oh it was all out the door but what was dope was that idris got involved and like it was just you know it was such a blessing to work with him it was a lot of fun but like he really believed in emmanuel and he wasn't just doing it because we were homeboys you know what i'm saying he was just like he believed in it yeah. this kid is, is is that talented but you know there's emmanuel of course the queen savannah ray like if you've been if you've been, you know what I mean, like really tapped in, you'll know like everybody from, you know what I'm saying, from SZA to Timberland to whomever, like, you know what I mean, everybody is on Savannah and she signed to Boy Wonder, um, you know, through us. So it's like, you know, Savannah out there crazy. Um, you know, I did a joint venture where, you know, you know what it is. Usually we go to America, you know what I'm saying? Right. 
But I did a joint venture with, um, you know, a massive producer who happens to be a friend of mine, Harmony Samuels. Harmony Samuels, he's produced for everybody from Usher, Chris Brown, Jennifer Lopez, anybody you could think of, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's worked, um, he's worked with them. People mainly know him uh, because he was the one that helped break Ariana Grande when she first came out. If you remember that joint with Ariana and Mac Miller from whenever it was like yeah, yeah, yeah. times that's yeah. him that produced that so we did a joint venture together to where he's you know his label is you know it's based out of out of canada you know what i'm saying and he live he's from the uk but he lives in in la in the mix of everything mm-hmm. but it's like for the first time he came to us because he's like yo i love the way canada moves like they move very different from how america moves so cardi i'm coming to mess with you because i believe in you and I think we could do something ill. And it's like, you know, we signed the first three acts that we signed is um, Gogo from Philly. You know what I'm saying? Um, she, she's an incredible, incredible R&B artist. We signed um, this dude. His name is Tigo from North Carolina. Tigo is ill. If you took like Post Malone and Future and smashed them together, that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. The sonics that you get. Um, and then we also signed uh, another amazing singer songwriter from from the UK, um, a girl named Ty, who was like just absolutely bananas with it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, like, hey what a what a day when the tables will turn. Yes, sir. When 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 we come up in the era where we have to grind, struggle, and and be the best we could possibly be mm-hmm. in America, and now. They're like, yo, we're coming to check y'all. We're coming to check y'all. Well, listen, you know, you know that like it's a lot of hard work. And the thing is, like, yo, bitch, I'm just, I'm just one person. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I, I think, I think what's dope and why you like this and, and other people that that follow your show will like this is it's like people like us don't get that shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, you feel what I mean? Like, and no disrespect, but it's like. Yo, there's, you know, there's a lot of dope people that are within the label system, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of corny people too. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So it's like to be able to, to like really um, get a shot, you know what I mean? To be in the label system and to be that person that can provide that opportunity and be a bridge. And like, I'm hoping that what I am to the youngins is what I would have wanted when I was young and signing, you know what I mean? How ill would it have been if there was somebody like us that was in the label system that we could sign to so that could show you all Guan and you know what I mean? Like- That's why I said that at the beginning, I was like, yo, finally, because I mean, for me, I know a few, I know the few of the guys that are, I know big guys, you know, I know a few people there, but when I said like, finally, the right guy in that position, it's like, I know you, I mm-hmm. know your journey. I know your successes. I know every the hard work. I know what you've done and what you mean, not just to hip hop, not just to music, but to our country, to yeah. our city. I know all of that. So when I say, yo, there's literally nobody else that could be in that position more than I would be happy, you know, even as an artist or, you know, for younger people to look up to like, they know who you are and they under and we know what you've been through and what you've done. And, and it's a beautiful thing to see you in this position. And I know it's only going to keep going. You're you don't you're not you don't get complacent, you don't get comfortable, you no, sir. never stop working. So no. I know that this is just <laughs> another step to more greatness, and I'm excited for that. No, I appreciate it, bro. Like, yo, <laughs> you know, one you know, one day, and we we talking about it right now, but like. The, the funny thing, like, really, bro, is what's crazy is that, like, I don't know, I don't know if there's, like, and this, is, and this is, I'm not taking away from what you just said at all, but what's so super ill, bro, is it's, like, I'm never, I've never been that person to, um, to really just talk about everything and, and put it out there. So it's, right. like, you know, there's pieces, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's, there's pieces of, of the story. There's pieces of the legacy that people, that people know, but I'm talking about like there's stuff that I'm holding on to some early days when we was moving around with like super G and, and chase and like stuff that we went through 
back in the day that like it would make the illest movie ever. I'm telling you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I learned some of my some some lessons, like in terms of like, you know, some coming of age stuff, um, some a lot of street stuff. Like there's a lot of things that we went through, but it's like I've never been the type of person that ever wanted to like promote something crazy without right. me being able to provide context. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's like, you know, at the end of the day, here's the thing. I'm a square, bro. You know what I mean? Like I, I just didn't have, I didn't have the patience to stand on no block and like sell nothing. You know what I mean? The only thing I used to sell, bro, is um, I used to, I used to slang mixtapes in high school. That's how I used to, you know what I mean? Make my money to go to studio. You know what I'm saying? To like go to to go to Dave's studio where, um, you know, where Shaw Claire and Socrates and those guys used to record. Shout out to and Lee Fredericks. Shout what out is to, shout what out is to, it? I don't know. Like if you lucky, there's like a, there's like a Lee spotting like once every five really? years. Or something. Yeah, he's around. He's around, but I, I haven't personally seen him in the physical in mad, in mad years, yo. I got real, real love for him, man. Mad years. He really but, looked out for me. In, hell yeah. In some trying times. For, yo, listen, for, for all of us, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, shoot, he was, you know, when we used to go up, when we used to go up to his studio, bro, I mean, if I had, <laughs> sometimes where I'm like, yo, how much is it per hour at the studio? It might've been like, I don't know. He used to get like the family rate, might've been 10 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour, whatever. Sometimes I might've gone up there with 18 bucks, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, literally I'm like, all right, I can get these, you know what I mean? Get this off in an hour here, hold this 15 and, you know, take that $3, two bucks to get you on the bus. And then, you know what I mean? Maybe, you know, get a soda or something. But, you know, those are those were the days. But, yo, I didn't have the patience or I don't think I had the personality um, to sell anything or get involved in the drug game. But what's crazy, though, is, you know, I also had, me personally, super blessings, yo. I had people that were heavy into that game that used to come check me and be like, yo, be like, here, here's two, 300, pull that, go to the studio. That's your thing. Yo, bro. Like, I want you to go do that. And I'm like, yo, like, I don't have, I don't have that money. I can't pay you back. They're like, yo, I don't want that. Yo, it's real shit. Want, you know what I mean? I don't want that, but they want this, you to stay this, out of there though. This is your calling. And those are the type of, those are the type of OGs. And not even OGs, because some of them, some of them were my age, bro. Like some of them were the homies. Like we went to school together, yeah. but it's just that, you know, we did different things after school. So for me, it was a super blessing because I didn't have people that were pressuring me into doing the dumb shit. You know what I mean? Right, because right, it's like right. the different neighborhoods that I grew up in, that I hung out at, like I could have turned out a whole other way. You know what I'm saying? But it's like God looked out for me my entire career. And he was just like, yo. If you are able to, um, you know what I'm saying, kind of like in, in layman's terms, if you're able to thug it out and not, you know what I'm saying, like be tempted to get into all this other stuff, like, trust me, I got you. You'll be rewarded later on. So it's like, you know, for me, and this is a this is a real thing, and I don't really talk about this too tough in public, but it's like, I remember grade seven, bro, like, you know what it is, grade seven, you go, it's summer vacation, you come back in September. Yo, grade eight, like the eighth grade, a lot of my homies were selling crack Yep. in grade eight. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I mean, I managed to come up around that when you're super impressionable. And it's like, what do you do? Like when, you know, when some of your guys, not all of them, but when some of your guys are like making so much money, they got mini motorcycles, freshest gear on, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? The illest shoes. They can buy whatever, whenever, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, as a kid, you know, I got to thank also thank my parents for being super influential and staying hardcore in my life. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, bro, like if That's they would have let up for a little bit, bro, like it could have went that way, bro. Because all like all the man's them were, you know, what I mean, like we're into that stuff, especially like when around that time. So, you know, it's, it's just very interesting the way that my life went and the fact that it's like yo i used to sometimes take you know take the ttc for two hours to get out to socrates house to go spend the weekend and we'd be producing 
you know what I'm saying, producing our own joints on the ASR 10 and whatever, whatever. And yeah, we was way out there in Scarborough, but we was super focused. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. I'm telling you why other, you know, other 14, 15, 16 year olds were doing whatever. It's like, yo, bro, like we were spending all our time, like we had this weird, this weird dream that we were going to make it in hip hop. And the thing was, shout out to the Trinity, to Maestro, Mishy, me and the Dream Warriors. But it's mm -hmm. like, we didn't really have anybody um, at the time that like showed that you can do this long term. Right. And this could be the thing that's going to pay your mortgage. On a marquee your level, family. Yeah. At that time, there was, you know what I'm saying? Like they did incredible stuff. Like Dream Warriors, people don't know. Dream Warriors was actually the, the first people to sell a million units from Canada. You know what I mean? They were the first people to go like platinum, platinum, like a million. Lou, units. shout out Lou. You know what I mean? Shout out, shout out to Capital Q and King Lou. Um, we all know what Maestro did, you know what I'm saying? First, first rapper to go double platinum, you know what I'm saying, in Canada. And of course, legendary, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody knew about him from you know, public enemy to you know the collabs that he did with Showbiz and them, like bro, he's still know. he's still putting out music and still, still trooping and still. I, I just talked to him yesterday, and we had word, we had, word, we had word. An incredible. Con we always have these long conversations, and he's a, he's our icon, man. He's our godfather. He's of our OG. He's the of guy. Course. Of course, you know. Course. I feel like I feel like you just answered. I don't know if you have a different one, but I feel like you just answered your risk that you took. That had the positive outcome. I don't know if you have another one because, like, because that well, I mean that was a risk that you took by not falling for temptation and and you know being able to stick to the dream and and being focused, right? But is there is there another risk that you took that had a positive outcome? I mean, there were a lot of there were a lot of them, bro. Because the other thing is like, what people don't understand is like, okay, it's the same way that there there are kids that were born at a certain time to where they're like, what's the big deal about a black president? That's the only president they knew up until the other day. Right. You know what I mean? Like there's some kids that were born into that era to where they're like, yo, Obama is the only president they knew. So it's like, they're like, yeah, of course you can be a, a president. What are you talking about? Like Obama was president for eight years. It is the exact same way um, that like some people come up in this era and they're like, what are you talking about? Like, of course, Toronto is like on the map and you know, one of the illest of all time right now is from Toronto. Like to them, that's like regular, but they don't understand that there was a time when people are like, are you fucking out of your mind? Like a, a Toronto rapper? That's, that's, that's what I came up in. So it's either my risk was sticking to my guns and wanting to take our Toronto slang, our Toronto culture, our energy and our vibes. And that was the flag that I was waving. Like I could have, you know what I mean? Like I could have just been on some generic hip hop, just lyricism and people could have been like, yo, like, yo, he's ill. But it's like, I pushed what we had to the front. You know what I'm saying? So it's like- And you never let up. You never no, let up. No, they, no. We're, hey, for those that don't know, like, I'm telling you right now, there was a time when it was not cool to be a rapper from Toronto. Like Hell a lot yeah. of people, they, yeah. they did not rock with us. Yo, they used to, yo, they used to try and clown us all the time. Like all the time. Yo, y'all niggas with the Raptors with that purple dinosaur with Barney mm -hmm. on your jersey. Like, mm -hmm. yo, they used to clown us crazy, 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 crazy. But we fought you know, for it. But let me show you something. I like I grew up. You know, shout out to MC Light, but like, I remember she had, you know, she had her joint kick this one for Brooklyn. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I remember growing up, you know, listening to KRS talking about South Bronx, mm -hmm. you know, listening to West Coast rappers talking about LA. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like so many different MCs were repping where they were from. I wanted for, um, you know, the rest of the world to recognize where we were from. You know what I mean? So that's why it was like, it was so crazy to me, like to have Bacardi slang actually start to work. And for people, even before they understood what the T dot was for people, they'd be yelling out everywhere and everybody knows it's the T dot. Like that was literally, literally a dream come true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I met some of the illest people in life 
and that was their introduction to me but the introduction to the city they were like yo i yo i did not know that toronto was like this and that felt dope to do because anybody that was outside <laughs> at them times know that bacardi slang old time killing grinding remix all the different like all those different classics that were happening at that time were just all quite like almost literal representations of what was just happening in the city at the time mm. you know what i'm saying like it wasn't a stretch it wasn't like somebody looked at that and they were like nah that that ain't what it's like like that's re that's literally what it was like at the time you know perfect, what i'm saying perfect the, the, representation you know what i mean so it was like i think to me that was probably the one one of the biggest risks that i ever took was you know what i'm saying i was like yo like toronto that's who that's who we are and to me just you know what i'm saying like being a canadian a canadian jamaican or jamaican canadian whatever you want to call it like i always tell people like for me my music is just it's just an extension of, of who i am so if you listen to them vibes like i tell people all the time when they're like yo what were you thinking about like when you guys were doing old time killing what i was thinking about was what that would play like at the clubs in toronto at the time like them times like when you were out in the streets them times like we yo we were one of the like in a good way though one of the rowdiest most energetic vibe music loving cities out of anywhere that i that i've been because you know we used to listen to some some east coast hardcore hip-hop but we'd also rock with some down south shit mm -hmm. we would play house music at the same at the same club that we would play dance hall music or r b you know what i'm saying like all them vibes is what was really happening at the time outside when you were in Toronto. So it's like, to me, I felt like I had to represent that in my music. You know what I'm saying? Cause Absolutely. that's just who we were. Yo, I, people love coming here when, 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 I mean, we're in pandemic now, but Americans, when they come here and they really experience Toronto culture yeah. and they, you know, there's nothing like it, man. I'm 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 so happy that this is where I'm from. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm I'm yeah. I'm happy because it's a melting pot of cultures, especially Scarborough as well. Like it's a melting pot of culture, music. You know what I mean? I grew up on dancehall music. Mm -hmm. Grew up on the best hip hop. Like mm -hmm. it's the best. I love I love it. And and when people come here, especially when Americans used to come down here for Carabana, for Banna. Yes, sir. It's the best. It's the, and I love hearing that now. Like I love hearing that being a normal thing that somebody will say, like, "Oh, you gotta get out to Banna. Oh, I gotta get out to Carabana. Oh, it's you know, it's mm -hmm. around Carabana. You know." Yeah. I love that it's so. I love that it's normalized worldwide now, and you are a very big part for that be becoming normalized very early. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, bro, that's what that's bro, that's what that's that's what we're supposed to do, though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like. My um, <laughs> my father-in-law used to tell my wife, he's like, "I'm not, I'm not gonna congratulate you for bringing home A's from school. That's what you're supposed to do." Right, right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like we supposed to go out there and rep, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, Ooh. and and we talked about this a bit earlier. Like, you know, you know what it is when he was out there on 106 and Park. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you was repping, but it's not like it was a reach like we already knew like you know what i mean like you was repping the city you was repping the town like mm -hmm. that's what you're supposed to do to me you're a cornball if we can't tell if you're from toronto or not exactly, exactly. you know what i mean to me you're a super cornball if you're like you know what i mean like really because just be, because like, because we're because toronto culture is so real it's a thing hell yeah. you know what i'm saying so it's like hell yeah I, I had a conversation. I had a conversation with this about with glasses with glasses, and we we mm. we talk we talk about the difference between between culture and how people bring culture to hip hop, or hip hop is their culture. Mm. So Toronto, we have a real culture, man, and mm -hmm. and if you don't rep that when you go out there or anywhere, 
I agree. You're a cornball. It's some cornball. You're a cornball. And you and listen, you know, speaking of Caravana, like people, people that um that came up with the, the era of like, you know, Friday nights going to Young mm-hmm. Street. Young so Street. People that are watching and don't know what they're talking about, the same way that like um in LA, like on a Sunday night, people used to go out to, I think it's Crenshaw. Mm-hmm. And they used to, you know, what I mean, they used to bring the low riders and people yep. used to just hang out and all the rest of that. During um Caravana on a Friday night is when, you know what I'm saying, like the whole strip. Bumper to bumper. Pat, you couldn't move. It was just, you know what I'm saying, it was just people. But, you know, the joke is that it's a, it's kind of like a, a Toronto thing. We know that like a lot of the girls used to love when the Americans would come down, you know what I'm saying? Cause they're like, oh, let me, let me, let me, let me find an American dude. So what would happen was you would end up getting some Toronto guys that would be on some cornball shit that would like put on this like this weirdo American, this pseudo New York accent or whatever. Going to get, to get the get Buffalo, the, going to Buffalo to get a rental. Right. You know what I'm saying? To try and get the girl. So it's we like, know the hustles. You know what I mean? So it's like, listen, culturally, like I love, I tell people all the time, like, I love the city. I love the era that I came up in. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know when this is gonna come out, but it's like. Regard, like regardless of when it's gonna come out, I think you know when we watched the locks versus Dipset. I think the reason why it resonated so much with me is it's because it's like we like that's the era that made me. You know what I'm saying? Like people don't understand. Like when I go to like even now as you know as a dude that like came up in this. You know what I'm saying? So it's like me and those dudes are all the same age. Like, bro, when people, when I go to New York and people is like, yo, who Cardinal official? Yo, we fuck with him crazy. Mm. When I go to, you know what I mean? When you go to Detroit, when you go to LA, when you go to, to London, when you go to wherever, yeah. like people don't understand that's that energy of that, what we saw, that's the energy that I came up in, yep. that we came up in. Yep. You had to be nice, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not about you doing this, like this, uh, self-declaration like yo i'm the illest says right. who right Some random people on the on the internet that's that's typing yeah i think you're ill nah bro like you don't they don't gotta people. prove it no more my g my first show that i did in new york city was in brooklyn at mm. ralph mcdaniel's block party i performed with mop with talib kwali with krs one yo some of the illest people ever but I'm also in the heart of Brooklyn. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's not some like little random. This is real know, shit. Else. Yo, I'm in the shit. middle of it and niggas will boo you if you're trash. 100%. But, you know, like that's just a very small example and one of the examples, but that's the type of environment that I came up in. So it's like. Hey, you, hey, before you, before you continue, yeah. you were my only sight of focus mm. that I always wanted to be better than mm. when it came to live shows. Mm. You were my guy. I was like, he's so fucking dope. I gotta <laughs> be better than him. And you Yo. know what? I, I get busy. Uh, yes, I can get busy yes, in yes, I sir. can get busy in front of a whole brand new crowd that knows none yeah. of my songs and Absolutely. I will tear that motherfucker down. And that's yeah. because I wanted to I you were the guy bro. I, t- I have so much respect for your live show. And, you know, I've toured with some of your brethren's and mm-hmm. I've, you know, I've taken so much pride. The live show to me is my favorite part of this entire thing we call our, our life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. that, and I'm telling you, I'm, 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 de- I'm making this declaration right now. Cause I've told you and I've told rich kid because he's another guy that I feel is on our heels. And mm-hmm. I'm telling you, <laughs> You were the guy, and I said, "Man, I got, I got that. That's my inspiration. That I want to be. I wanted to always be better than." You know what's so ill though? Like, I've um, I when I was when I was a kid, like when we were in Flemo mm-hmm. for fun, like me and my brethren, like as we were little kids, like rest in peace to Bismarck. He, like I used to be my first thing in hip hop. I was a beatbox. So I used to like, I knew all of Biz Marquis routines. Like, you know what I'm saying? To like, for a little while, I had the moniker of Biz Jr. Because it's like, I literally, my first thing was a beatbox. But 
coming up, we used to just emulate everything that we would get, um, that we would have on our cassettes. So it was either we were at the time like, you know, taping um, Ron Nelson from one to four on a Saturday, or whenever people in Flemo used to go to New York and tape the radio, they would come back and everybody would just get a dub. Everybody would just get a copy, you know right. what I'm saying? So we used to emulate that. And then as it went on, I remember, you know, we started moving around the city. One of the first people that um, encouraged me to like take it serious was a dude that worked at the community center down um, by Alexander Park Projects. You know what I'm saying? Like where yeah. I used to hang out because my mom, she worked for the Board of Education. So she used to teach at Ryerson Public School. So I used to hang in Alexander Park a lot. Mm. And it's like Herman Ellis, who was, um, you know, one of the one of the guys that um, that worked at the center, he's like, yo, you guys should like take this more serious, start practicing. Listen, I'll open up a room, give you guys a room, practice space. You guys can do your little dance routines and yeah. write your raps and whatever. And yo, as 13 year old kids, 14 year old kids, I started winning like citywide competitions. So it's not something that just like started like when I was 18 or 19, right. like even as kids, we were, we were mopping people from every turf. But that's also like, I'm telling you, that's why the story is so ill, but that's how I met Director X and Taj and those guys, because mm -hmm. they used to be like 92, they was kids, 93, they was kids in the battle with us. So we was battling them wow. when they had their rap crews, you know what I'm saying? Monolith, we used to battle that. Like all these different people were in, you know what I'm saying? Were a part of the scene because that's what it was. It was like at the time it was like, I don't know what you want to call it, but it was a, a, a contest scene to where it's like, whatever the big contest was, that's right. where all the dopest MCs were. Because right. whatever, like you would get, you know, a little prize of like, yo, you might win studio time or you win some money yep. or the opportunity to do a, you know, to do a concert. Bro, that's how I first met Maestro. If Maestro ever told you the story about when he first met me, it's because I was a kid and I won a citywide contest. It was like some anti, anti-drug, the mayor's task force on drugs. And yeah. they were like, yo, whoever can write the illest anti-drug raps, like you will win uh, an opportunity to open up for Maestro at Ontario wow. Place or whatever. Wow. So when I was a kid, that's how I met Maestro. You know what I'm saying? Because he was one of the judges. Maestro yeah. and Be Cool were, were the judges for the shit that I was in as a, as a cool. little kid. Wow. Yeah. So wow. that's what I'm trying to show. So I say all that to say, like, I grew up you know, sharpening my skills when it came to the to the live. But bro, I'm not going to pretend like I didn't get booed before. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I remember people, boo, like, I remember being at this one audition, we got booed, and the only person clapping was Thrust. That's it. Thrust <laughs> was the only, per only person I was he, like, yo. Hey thrust, is, hey, thrust is good for a clap. Yo, he's a, yo, you, yo, he's, good, he's try. Support. good try. But I remember from that day, it's never happened ever again in my life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like from that day, when I talk about Bacardi slang and I'm talking about like, you know, bottles being thrown and all the rest of that stuff, like that shit is, that shit is real. They weren't thrown at me, but like, that's the environment. So I was always like, yo, if you could be ill in Toronto and make it out of how crazy our crowds used to be, you can make it anywhere. People don't understand. Our crowds are nice now, bro. Like they're nice. They're going to turn nice. no matter what. Our, yo, my time, yo, I've seen people get like buckets of chicken thrown at them, bottles, like garbage cans. I've seen Bro. people catch beat downs. In the, yo, in the battle crazy. circuit, crazy. Yeah, people man. killed. People, yo, sometimes I see some of these, 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 these stories in these movies, bro. The battle rap shit that, that, that was in Toronto, mm. people were getting, people got shot. Like mm -hmm. things happen, bro. And yeah. the conditions out here, it was the screw face for real. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Okay. It really, it really was. Yo, hold on. Okay, we gotta flip the coin now. Because <laughs> you see what you see what's happening. And this is this is why I'm so excited about this episode, is because it's gem after gem after gem. And I feel like that's what this series is starting to become more mm -hmm. and more every time. It's just Word. gem after gem. And and, and the people are just soaking up all this knowledge. Okay, we got to flip the coin, Cardi. Okay. You got to tell the people a risk that you took mm -hmm. 
that wasn't a good come up. It wasn't a good risk. And it was like, ugh. Um, <laughs> Everybody gets the same vibe. You know what? Um, not here's here's the thing. I don't. I honestly don't have any of those, bro. Um, like, like it doesn't have to be something that you regret, but because no, you learn, you you learn from it, right? So. Yep. Um. And I've been thinking about this a lot, but not like, I don't know. I don't know if, um, I don't know if I really have one, bro. I, I honestly don't, I honestly don't know if I have one. I think that's a blessing. <laughs> yo, you know what? Here's the only thing that I would say. There's a couple of things that have happened in my life that where I was like, um, Maybe, may, and, I, and I know maybe this ain't the way that it's supposed to go, but maybe it's like it worked out for them. But there are two, there are two people that I probably should have, um, even though I definitely, you know, they'll tell you from the earlier days, like, again, these are all stories that are just like under the cover, but it's like, right. um, you know, I think with, I think with Boy Wonder, I believed in him so early, you know what I'm saying? And I think um, there was a time that I had wanted to, that I had wanted to sign Boy Wonder to me. The thing is, honestly, I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I honestly didn't know, I didn't know how to do it. I just knew that it was a thing that right. you could sign somebody to you. Right. So I remember like, the thing was like, and it's all love to this day. There's not like, for sure. Wonder, like from day one, I remember Wonder came to my house with this, I tell this story, like with this dusty old computer. And yo, the beats that he played me out of that computer, I was like, I was looking at him. I was like, yo, this is what you made those beats on? And like, he didn't have, like, he didn't have a controller. You know what I'm saying? Like he didn't have- He had a anything. computer. Bro, he was- playing everything like using the J button, the W, like he was just playing everything like the chords. He was playing it using the letters, like programming the beats. He was using this crusty, dusty old PC. And it's like, I remember, you know what I'm saying? Like, I remember, um, I was like, yo, how much are you selling these beats for? And, and I, I'll never tell people what he told me, but he told me a number that was so low I remember when I, I remember when I hit Morgan, Morgan's like, yo, that's incredible. I was like, Morgan, we can't pay him that, bro. We got to pay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got to give him some real money. On the strength, like, we yeah. we got to at least, you know, pay him five, six, seven times, you know what I mean? Like, what, what he was asking at the time. And I mean, to me, it was just one of those ones where, A, he deserved it. And, and again, it still wasn't even that big of a check at all. Right, right, but the right. thing was, he didn't have a placement before that. Like he'll tell you his literal first major label placement was with me. You know what I'm saying? On the not for sale album. And that to me is an incredible privilege to have because it's like, I believed in him. Like I, the, the beats were just that ill. Like, yo, let oh. me show you something. Pusha, Pusha called me. Um, Cause remember like we did, you know, Boy Wonder produced the set it off joint. Mm -hmm. So I sent I sent it to the clips. I said, yo, I got a beat. I sent it to them, whatever, email or whatever. And I remember he, they called me like, yo, who the fuck did this? Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, this little this little kid named Boy Wonder. Because I think Wonder was still in high school them time. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And yo, like people don't understand like how ill Boy Wonder was as a like as a kid. Like, yo, Carabana, Carabana Saturday, Interscope was here. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, it was all that crazy stuff was going on. You know what I'm saying? Convict and dangerous, yeah. this, that, whatever. But set it off, what people don't know was that, yo, Jimmy Iovine played it for Dr. Dre. And I remember I got, yo, I remember I got this call. Like, we were at, I think, what's, what's the steakhouse called? Morton's? 
Is that what it's called? Um, yeah, there's more. I think it's more. It so, doesn't matter. Where, where in LA? We were at this, no, here, here, here. We were at a oh, steakhouse. Here. Yeah, we were at a steakhouse um, um, here. This is before like Harbor 60 and all that. Yeah, this is a long time and, and um, I remember I think, they got I think you were right, Morton's. I think you're right. I think it's Morton's. But anyways, got a call. Um, one of the, you know, one of the label reps got a call and they're like, yo, Dr. Dre want to talk to you. I said, what are you talking about? They're like, yo, he's on the phone. I'm like, he's on the phone? So I'm like, I, I take out the phone. I'm like, yo. And Dr. Dre is talking to me about how much of a fan he is of Set It Off. And he was, he wanted to jump on the Set It Off remix. Wow. So Dr. Dre is spitting me his verse. He's rapping his verse a cappella to me on the phone. And I'm just like, what's happening? Wow. But I'll be honest, never mind the fact that me and the clips, like, you know, we did, we, we did our thing, but he was also like, yo, that beat, that beat inspired me. And this is at a time when like nobody could get Dre to do anything. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the fact that, you know, here's, you know, here's Dr. Dre, you know, jumping on this set it off remix. Now, mind you, the same shit that happened with the fucking, his album that's supposed to come out for the last 20 years, the same shit happened with that. He didn't want to put it out. Like, I don't know what happened. He was just like, last minute, he was like, nah, nah, nah. Right. And I was like, fuck me. But, uh. but you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just one of the stories that, that happened, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to Boy Wonder. Now, I knew from them times that he was that ill. You know what I'm saying? Same, and I same. think, yeah, and I think whatever, whatever it was that happened, I don't really know what happened as to why, like, it never ended up happening. But knowing what I know now, and I mean, listen, honestly, like from my from my inner spirit, like I'm super happy the way things did pan out for, for right. one. But it's like knowing what I know now, I probably, you know what I'm saying? Like would have, you know, went way, 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 way tougher at trying to, you know what I mean? Have them be a part of the team at that time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's probably like, I guess if you look at it, that was a risk that I took from not really like, that's exactly, on yeah, it. that's exactly you know what, I mean? what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because it's like you, because you at that point, like you knew it, your gut told you. Yeah, every yeah. every every sign was in front of you. Hell yeah. And sometimes we don't hear that sign and we don't, or we just don't move on that sign. Yeah, sometimes we don't move, sometimes we don't move fast enough. Sometimes we don't, you know what I mean, go, you know, loose talk, but don't go as hard as we should. You know what I'm saying? Like right. sometimes, like we, you know, we kind of let situations like slip through our hands. But the thing is, there's somebody else that's going to go that extra mile that's going to end up reaping all the benefits and getting those rewards. Right. So I, I would say that's, that's, you know, that's, you know, for me, um, excuse me, it's probably one of, one of the biggest ones. And I, and I mean, like, you know, Boy Wonder honestly is just, he's just, he he's is a machine. Never, he's an incredible human being and he's a machine. Yo, <laughs> he, let me show you something when i first went to his crib back them times and like you know he came in and his parents like they all like mm -hmm. they, they they are like the jamaican cosby's they're like yo i love you dad yo i love you son i'm like what what is this like you know what i'm saying like right. his family is so dope and i just remember that from back them times like just real real love he came up what seems like in an amazing house. Yeah. So it's like when you know Boy Wonder and you know that he is not a dude that has any malice in his heart, you know that he's a dude that, you know what I'm saying, is not bad minding anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, shout out, shout out to Wonder. He's just, you know, he's just a good dude, always has been, seems like it, he always will. And yes, he is one of the illest producers to ever grace this game. You know what I'm saying? Hey, if if I do if I ever do a sound clash, producers, my whole arsenal is boy wonder. So that's that's, <laughs> that's, how, I feel. that's how I feel about it. One who knows, one who knows. Word, word. I've actually won a sound clash against some guy in the UK, and I bodied him with old time killing. <laughs> I actually bodied boy wonder in a sound clash. 
You body boy one in the sound crib class. at his crib. Oh wow. A dance hall sound clash. Oh si- what? Mm-hmm. Hold on. A Peruvian done off of Jamaican. I hope he sees this because he'll remember. Oh he, he looked at me like this. He goes, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. I got yeah. him. I, he maybe I even had to go after that battle. Man, I'm gonna save it for his episode. After I, t- <laughs> I tell you, I even went and got one of those little little channelers and the little because I was like, yo, the sound effects joint. The one, you know, little the little mic, the little DJ setup, the yeah, little yeah, DJ yeah. to go. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Cause yeah. I was like, I was running off of his system, right? And mm. I said, next time I'm gonna come with my records, bro. I'm gonna come right. with my, you know what I'm saying? I'm coming with my my selection. <laughs> but I got him, I got him. I, I, I love Wanda so much, man. I think he, all the flowers that he gets, but Sound Clash thing, nah, he's, he's, he's not ready for that. He's not ready for that. <laughs> he's not ready for that. I don't even know what my, I don't even know what my sound, my sound would be called section sound. Maybe I don't know. But I'm ready for Clash anytime. That's a pretty dope name. Yo, thank you. Okay, that was dope. Before, I, you know I mean? I know we got, we got family stuff to deal with. You know, I'd love to sit here and chop it up, but I got I, I, one more thing I want to touch on right now, uh, mm. specifically that's that happened not too long ago, because we were talking about the grind and the, our time coming up and, you know, how intentional we had to be dope and, you know, all the stuff that we went through right mm-hmm. now, fast forward, 2021, 2020, 2021, I think it, I think this kind of popped off in 2021, but you all of a sudden became the subject of a new app and going viral over a record that we were talking oh. about. <laughs> you became TikTok famous, bro. Yeah. Talk to me about that because like we were just talking about, we have no type of no type of that in our brought up C in our yeah. in our careers. Yeah, and then yeah. all of a sudden you're like, Yo, you're getting you get text messages, you're getting DMs, you're getting calls. What is going on? Talk about that. <laughs> that was yo, that was a was it hella yeah. random? Let me show you something. Like <laughs> I can't like sometimes I can't make heads or tails of shit. Like I understand <laughs> it, but there's just some shit where I'm just like, I don't know, bro. Like La- here's the th- here's the honest thing. Last summer, the summer of 2020, people are like, yo, there's an ill, uh, dangerous challenge going on, but it was a dance. So it was like, it, there was a dangerous dance challenge that happened mm-hmm. last summer. And was, you know, shout out to, um, to Professor Dory uh, from the AGO, but it's like, I remember her post that she did, like her shit went viral because she did the dangerous dance challenge. Like there's like, I don't know, like it was going, it was ringing off last summer and I was like, oh, that's weird. But here's the crazy thing, that went away and then there was a different dangerous challenge that came up at the top of this year. Now here's what's wild. So, you know, on whatever, I work at Universal and, um, you know, we had these two young ladies that work within the digital department and they're like, hey, yo, Cardi, I'm just letting you know, X, Y, and Z just posted your video. It's about to get crazy for you. And I'm just like, first of all, who the hell are you talking about? Right. And B, what are you talking about? They're <laughs> like, all right. They're like, all right, watch. About two weeks later, son, like people started hitting me from all around the Bro, world. I hit and you up. Like, yo, I son, hit you up. Fam, I'm like, yo, what is going on? So I don't know if this is where it started, but one of the biggest people in in TikTok, one of the biggest people on the platform, um, this girl had posted this, this dangerous challenge. And from there, boop, whoop, like it just exponentially grew into this crazy thing. So, yo, it started not just going crazy on TikTok to where it was like, I can't remember, like, bro, like the numbers just started to not make sense after a while. Cause they'd be like, yo, there was this many million unique things that happened this week. I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, yeah, there's like hundreds of thousands a day. Okay, so does this now, now, now me, I'm I'm from the same, close to the same area as you, like mm-hmm. overlapping, right? So yep. for a guy like me, 
I have no idea of the back end of this, you know, the, the business side of these apps like TikTok and stuff. So you're literally the only guy that I know from my era that's ever experienced something like this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So is, is this something that becomes like, I don't need numbers, but I'm saying like, does this, does this turn into a residual monetary situation? Like, it does, but like that's the thing that's shit about this era. Had this been when I was younger, right? Like the thing is, it's like remember that's cold hard cash, right? Translates into cash. But now remember what you're doing is you're just winning people's time, right? So again, going back to that, what happens is in order for you to capitalize on that moment, basically you got to figure out now that you have their attention and their ears and their eyes. You got to feed them. You got to, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, so right. It's like, it's one of those ones, like for me, like it, it translated from platform to platform because people started going crazy on Spotify. All of a sudden I was like number one in all these countries around the world wow. streaming. You know what I'm saying? Like for a song that used to stream, like, I don't know, say it streamed like 500,000 a week. All of a sudden you're doing like, like 2.4 million a day. What? You know what I'm saying? Like, like what? That kind of yeah, like wow. at the height, that's that's what it can translate into. So, so then that like, turns into royalties and you know, right. The only difference is that, like, as we know, you know, the streaming royalties that we get a lot different. Yeah, yeah. You know, what I mean, you could stream a cabillion and you know, you 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 got enough money to to buy yourself a pair of socks and a <laughs> and a happy meal, you know what I'm saying? So I think you know, you know. Knowing what I know right now, if you happen to be, um, you know, some like a newer artist, a newer MC that has a moment like that, you know what I'm saying? Like if you catch a wave, like it's it's super ill for you because you can literally take that wave now and you can figure out like, there, yo, there's so like this is this got to be part one, bro. There's so many things that Ooh. I've learned that I'd love to pass on, yeah. but it's like put it this way. You now have, when we came up, it was more structured to where we knew the avenues that we had to hit in order to see success. Right. So you could actually measure how dope somebody was because it was like in Canada, they'd be like, yo, he was on Rap City. Oh, ill. Right. Then the next thing is like, yo, he made it on to, to MOD on Friday, much on demand. Oh, ill. Right. You know what I'm saying? After MOD, you know what I mean? He made it to this other thing. In America, it's like, you know what I'm saying? You might, you know, start off doing whatever, then you're on MTV2, then you're on MTV, then you're on, you know what I'm saying, TRL, you're on 106 and part, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's all these, like, very, within the culture, these, these, these monolithic moments that, monocultural, sorry, moments yeah, that yeah, happen yeah. with, you know, within the culture to where you, you can see when somebody is ascending. The thing about today is what that kind of looks like is the numbers that you get. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's very, it's very different because you can't necessarily equate the two because, and this is the thing that when you're like, yo, I don't get it. I don't necessarily get it either. But here's the thing. You can have a nobody, like literally somebody that lives on the end of our block that maybe came up with an ill four bars Mm -hmm. and puts it on TikTok, the algorithm could work so that millions of people are seeing this, this random guy spit four bars to where he's having this viral moment. So you could literally be nobody with no experience, no actual song, mm -hmm. but you put a snippet up and you, and you could come up off that. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what's kind of ill about TikTok. TikTok is not about your followers. You yo, you could go on there today and have one follower, but when you post your shit, it doesn't post on your profile. It just posts on TikTok. Like it posts on the like on the page, kind of like how Reels work. That's how Reels on Instagram. Right, right, that's right. why people mess with Reels. They bit that from TikTok. So it's yeah. like TikTok is a, it's like anything goes and anybody could get it. So if you came up with something that was whatever, just resonated with people and they just start sharing and the algorithm catches on, bro, all of a sudden, like, and it's happened in three weeks, you could go from zero to like 
a hundred thousand followers on TikTok and you become TikTok famous. So what I'm saying is it's like, bro, there's a whole thing that you got to learn because what's, what's, we talk about risk and rewards as a SVP. Now we are, you know, having a lot more conversations in terms of how do you accurately take money and invest because the people are speaking because it's direct to consumer. So the people are the ones that are giving these guys all the views and all the time. Yep. So basically they're already letting you know that if you figure out a way to market this TikTok artist, it'll turn, it'll turn into income. You know what I'm saying? So then you got to start to look at what does that ROI look like? You know what I mean? This guy that just G'd off and got, you know, 50 million, whatever TikTok numbers, yeah. you know, that means that the people are interested. All right. If you give them a deal, what does that deal look like? Like, is he a one hit wonder? Like, is it just this one song? Is he a career artist? Like it's crazy. So there's layers, fam. There's so many layers to it. You know what I mean? So when you ask about me that went, you know, that went um, viral, bro, that was organic. Like yeah. there's, com you know, there's companies that we pay or people or employees that we pay where it's their job to try and figure that shit out. But I'm telling you what happened to me, you can't pay for that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like when it happened and people are like, yo, how do you feel? <laughs> I feel super blessed because <laughs> I, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know it, I know it's something that God was like, yo, basically, <laughs> I gotta show I gotta show these youths like without you having to be the one like, you know who I am back in right, 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 like, right. I didn't have to say shit, bro. I was chilling. Lit, and all lit. of a sudden you have these kids who are like, yo, dad, my favorite song is by this guy named Cardinal Fish. You ever heard of him? And like all these parents like are hitting me like, yo, it's hilarious. You're my, you're my daughter or my son's new favorite artist. You know what I'm saying? So to them, they know exactly who I am, but these kids, it's a re, you know, it's a rediscovery. And I think it's ill because that can that can happen to anybody. And I'll just mm -hmm. end it like this. Look at what happened. We know who Jada Kiss is. Mm -hmm. We know what Jada Kiss was capable of. But how ill is it that like literally in a night, all of a sudden the culture was reignited, but you have all these kids now who are like, yo, Jada Kiss is my new favorite. I've never seen no shit like that. But that's... Bro. How that's did it? How did he manage to look twenty one? Look, sound, and perform like he was like twenty, twenty one. You're asking the person who does that. That all that also <laughs> took the formula from Pharrell. So between me, Jada Kiss, Pharrell, and a handful of like we, you know what I mean? Like Jada Kiss looked the exact same that he did twenty years ago. Crazy, crazy. He don't look no different. But his performance. Oh my God, that's that's that right there is is excellence. That's excellence. Yo, he needs a statue in front of the garden, bro. The hardest, yo. I seen other MCs that were commenting like, yo, MCs that I rate mm -hmm. that were commenting like, yo. First of all, how is it the end of the night and his breath control is the same as the beginning of the night? But also, how did he memorize flawlessly all them verses, bro? I've Everything. seen. Bro, I've seen some of the best of the best of the best who probably halfway through that night at least would have fumbled a little bit. We saw and that I with the competition. It. We saw that with the dips. The dips were forgetting their bars. Yo, we might have to do a part two. <laughs> we, might have, we might have to do a part two. Right. We, might have, we, we might have to just do like, you know, once every couple of months. <laughs> just be like Bishop and Cardi are gonna talk. Yo, bro, this was Birthday this was, guys. This was this was you know this was mad fun, but it's like, man, I just love um, and not on some whack shit, bro. Because yo, like, here's the thing, like, I think, and I think it's gonna go away. And what I love, like, I love that it's happening. I can't even say on its own. Shout out, shout out to Drink Champs. Shout mm -hmm. out to uh to Verses. Shout out to um what you're doing shout out to people like what i love is that right now in a very very real way bro is it's like hip-hop is is now learning and understanding that we can celebrate 
our goats. We can celebrate our OGs. Yep. And it's not a it's not a them or us type of thing to where your light doesn't dim because you're shining light on somebody else that you think is ill. You know what I'm saying? Like hip hop, we also have to understand like we're growing. So we're yep. growing, we're evolving and we're learning. But what I love is that now we're getting into this place to where people are like, no, nah, what are you talking about? Like, yo, I fuck with Bishop. When I was a kid, I seen him represent us on BET. I seen him do this. I seen him put it down. You know what I'm saying? The battle, I seen him do all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like there's people now that can give it up and they don't feel no type of way for that. Right, right. I see people all the time, bro, that are like now, that are like, yo, Cardinal, yo, salute, bro. I salute you, family. Like, yo, it's all love. I can never, you know, and I don't want nobody's, bro, I don't want, I'm not out here like campaigning for people to thank me or no dumb shit like that. But at the end of the day, like, I, I just think that it's so ill. The same way that you can recognize that you love Dipset. And, you know what I'm saying? If you're a New Yorker, like I spoke, like I talked to one of my best friends who's a New Yorker. He's like, yo, do you know what last night was for a New York, for New York? But what's interesting was I saw some conversations today where we still got a little bit of a ways to go in terms of like even some of our younger generation not always looking outside. Sometimes they got to look within and understand like the amount of ill shit that we had coming up because they weren't outside. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't educate yourself and know about what was going on. Right. The weird, crazy thing is that, you know, and again, this is not my ego talking, but it's like, I've met some of my heroes and these niggas come to me talking about, yo, my G, I fuck with you, bro. Yep. Yo, you are one of my favorite. And I'm like me, but you understand what I'm saying? Like, you you gotta look at it. You look at it, there's gems all along the way, man. Bro, we can't have outside people recognize us more than we recognize ourselves. And the thing is, Toronto has one of the illest legacies ever, fam. So I just, you know, I just can't wait till we get to that point to where people really understand and start to value what we have and what we had Mm -hmm. and things that will come from here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love Dipset. I love the locks. But it's like, to me, I also understand and recognize, like, I still get goosebumps when I hear certain Michi Me joints. I get goosebumps when I hear Concrete Mob, when I hear Ghetto Concept, when I think about, you know, some of the ill rude boy shit that I got was from Jellystone and and Mm. ORB from Rex. When I think about Sixth Sense, when I think about Citizen Kane, when I think about Mm. Fast Monk, when I think about Let's go. So many, when I think about G Knight, when I think about, you know what I'm saying? Like so many incredible MCs, so many incredible groups that we had that came from here. Like eventually people are, people are going to know what that is, or at least they're going to know, understand and, and respect and love. You got to keep documenting it. We got to do. keep documenting. We absolutely do. Putting it out. Absolutely do. Man. My G, I appreciate I'm like I'm like super inspired, bro. I'm right. I'm writing a verse tonight, bro. It's a rap. Come on. It's a rap. Come I'm, on. I'm like, you got to. I'm super inspired. The locks, Cardi, risk and reward. <laughs> hey, listen. I appreciate you, bro. Nah, no, I appreciate every time, you, bro. You know what I'm saying? And nah. May 11th. That's us, man. Yo, hold hey. on. I, hey, listen. I gotta. I gotta say this before we dip. I will say because like. Yo, I, I never always knew, um, and half of that half of that is my fault is because, again, it's like there's times when you're younger in life when you don't necessarily go out of your way to, to do certain things. So, you know, coming up, I used to see you all the time, bro, and I was just like, I never knew what time you were on, you know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, like, because you were doing what MC should do in terms of having the bravado, you know what I mean? Having that shit like nobody can not fuck with me kind of shit. But yeah. what I love about our relationship, bro, and what I love about us coming up is that as we got older, the layers peeled away. And I'm like, yo, I really fucks with homeboy. You know what I'm saying? Likewise. Like, likewise. I remember, you know what I mean? I remember times where like we'd be at the same event. We just go to the bar and, you know what I mean, have a little drink, just chop it up. And what I love is that just like as we got older, I think that's what's ill about hip hop and growing up within hip hop 
and you know what I'm saying like understanding and cherishing relationships is that it's like we didn't really mess with each other on some like yo what bishop can do for me or what cardinal can do for me it was just on some you know what I'm saying just mutual respect you know what I'm saying in terms we exist, of like, we existed in the same yeah. space and it's ill and and I and bro I just think it's dope like I'm I'm very thankful for you like you know like everything you do and I support it like the ends like you know what it is from the first day I saw it from its inception I was like yo that's ill I need it on the I news you know what I'm on the news national I appreciate you man yo man it's it's really dope man and I love I love what you're doing and you know what I mean like yo just just keep going family because we need ah, a lot more you, people like you family for real ah thank you man Yo, listen. This is this is literally, this is this is an honor, and I'm I'm so happy that everybody on our side of the border now can can uh, stop messaging me. They can stop me. <laughs> I believe in comments. Get Cardi on the show. Get Cardi. On the show. <laughs> Yo, they're gonna be happy, man. Yo, again, Cardi. Thank you so much for being here. My everybody, pleasure. I appreciate the gems. Yo, everybody, please subscribe. Where can we get the hustling gear, bro? Oh, you know what? You can if you go to um uh the easiest way, and it's a it's a um works out double for me. Go to my IG, follow me at Cardinal O. But if you go to the link in my IG, just the, the link in bio or whatever. Yeah, man, the link tree will come up and, you know, you'll see the Cardinal merch oh. and you can get, you know what I'm saying, the hustling gear, the Bacardi slang joints. This is all a collab that I did, you know what I'm saying, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Firestarter. Love it. We got some ill new drips that's coming out um, in September. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Just just stay tuned to all of that. But now I appreciate you. Guys. Hey, Bishop Brigante, Cardinal, this is Risk and Rewards. Yeah. Illest episode yet, man. Salute. I